people are getting really freaked out by things like droughts and floods and fires and people don't know what to do but then they see beavers and they're like well if there's beavers in my town in my community like i have a climate solution that works Beavers are what's called a charismatic megafauna, meaning that they're a big animal that people like. They look cute. If you've ever seen a beaver in real life, in the water when they're swimming around, they're agile, they're slick, they can hold their breath for like 15 minutes. If you wanna have drought resilience and you wanna have fire resilience, you have to have water in the first place. And so every time there's a wet period, that water comes cruising down degraded streams really quickly. And it does, it just bolts to the ocean and we don't get the maximum value of that water in the watershed. Beavers are, are pretty well known for building beaver dams, which is essentially a collection of sticks and mud. What beavers do is help slow down the flow of water and let it spread over the landscape so that they have deep enough water for habitat. When you're trying to achieve climate resilience through the work of beavers, you can either build the beaver dam analogs, which are basically fake beaver dams that we create, or you can physically relocate a beaver that's found itself in conflict somewhere else to where you want it to be. So National Forest Foundation isn't, isn't working actively to relocate any beavers. We are trying to replicate what they do. Often beavers that are within a reasonable distance come to that area because we've already done some of the initial work. When the beaver ponds are in its way, every single one is like a speed bump for the water. And it pushes it out onto the floodplain where it can sink in, get stored, and it's the stored water there that keeps the plants green during drought that makes them inflammable when there's a fire. Our big dream is that we can restore every headwater, every watershed um, that feeds into the Colorado River on national forest lands. It will be millions and millions of dollars to get all of the work done that's needed. And we're just gonna start chipping away at it one project at a time. There's a lot of work to be done thinking about compensation programs, thinking about policy changes, thinking about ways to make it so that people want to support that change and don't feel like it's being forced upon them. We really need to be intentional about that and not brush off the concerns and say like, whatever, give your land back to the beaver. Like, mm, let's also respect people in this. One of the, the benefits that flow from this work is not just water. What we see is that it creates more resilient ecosystems, wet ecosystems that can withstand climate change and the effects of climate change like wildfire. And I'm hopeful that in 10 to 20 years, we're gonna have a large portion of the headwaters of some of our most stressed Western rivers restored using these processes. Looking forward at the massive challenge that climate change is, I think we will really benefit from thinking critically about all these different players in the landscape, what they do, and what do we have to do to let them build their own climate resilience? Because I don't know if we can do it on our own, but we definitely can if we're partnering with nature. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.